Uh, as the customer going to uh, read the messages from His Holiness the Patriarch, as well as uh, His Eminence the Metropolitan for the feast. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Christos Anisti, Elitos Anisti. I congratulate you all on the glorious feast of the resurrection of the year 2022. I congratulate all the dioceses, Coptic churches, and Coptic monasteries in the East and the West. I congratulate all the fathers, the metropolitans, bishops, priests, and monks. I congratulate all the deacons and members of the church boards everywhere. I also congratulate all the Coptic families that are celebrating the glorious feast of the resurrection, every family, every father, and every mother. I congratulate the youth, the servants, the elders, and the children. I congratulate you on this joyful feast that we celebrate every year. In the life of Christ our Lord, there are many stations or events or milestones. During his public service, which extended for more than three years, there were major events of miracles, meetings, teachings, and parables during which the Lord Christ met with his disciples and with many people, either individually or in groups through his service. One of these major events was the place where his disciples gathered and went to Caesarea Philippi in northern Palestine. There he asked them, who do men say that I, the son of men, am? They answered him. Then he asked them for the, the following question, but who do you say that I am? St. Peter, the apostle, answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. This statement was documented in each of the four gospels in different ways, but it was written in the light of the glorious resurrection. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. This was an important event in the life of the disciples. Thereafter, he began to speak about what would happen in the coming weeks and months that in, in his life of the service, our Lord Jesus Christ would be delivered, crucified, buried, and then rise again. Then came the event of the transfiguration, a station where three disciples were gathered. They were Peter, James, and John. Peter represents faith, James represents struggle, and John represents divine love. On Mount Tabor, they met with Jesus Christ in the presence of Moses and Elijah the prophets. There was a conversation, and the most important part was, Lord, it is good for us to be here. This is considered a glimpse of eternity, a light from eternity. This is what made the Apostle Peter ask to make three tabernacles to extend their stay in this bright and joyful scene. After the transfiguration, as we read in the Gospel of our teacher, St. John, or in the four Gospels in general, St. Mark the Apostle may have also referred to it in his Gospel briefly when he said that the Son of Man would be delivered, crucified, die, and rise from the dead. The disciples began to wonder, what is the resurrection from the dead? The resurrection, my beloved, is not merely an event that took place in the past and is not simply a historical event. Our celebration of the glorious resurrection is not just a celebration that took place in the past and is over. The resurrection is a real beginning to human existence. It is a fresh beginning for man after sin has overtaken him and defeated him, resulting in death. The resurrection came to be that, what, that we may be victorious and say with St. Paul the Apostle, O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The resurrection of the Lord Christ is completely different from all prior miracles of the, of the resurrection in which he raised the dead, such as the raising of the widow of this, the son of the widow of Nain, the daughter of Jairus, or raising Lazarus even after four days of his presence in the tomb. The resurrection of Christ is completely different because it is resurrection towards human experience. It is a new beginning to human life. Oh, happy are those who enjoy this resurrection. Let us stand together at the final scenes of the resurrection. The first is at the cross. It is a scene full of pain, sadness, and many sufferings. We have all passed through the Passion Week with all its readings, chants, and hymns, and we experienced and lived with the Savior hour by hour. The station at the cross is that of pain and concludes at the tomb. Christ was crucified on the cross during the reign of Pontius Pilate, as we say in the Creed. Then he was placed in a new tomb where no one had been placed before. The tomb became a place where all dreams end, and one of hopelessness, it is the station of death. Although this period lasted only three days, these were days of fear, panic, and terror. We sense these tribulations as we read in the four Gospels. Even the disciples themselves were in great distress and panic. God did not leave them to fall in despair, but on the third day, the dawn of Sunday, he rose from the dead. He who was here, Jesus Christ, he is not here, but is risen. We read in the Gospel of our teacher, St. John. 
Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. This is the joy of the resurrection by which a human becomes glad and joyful. <clears throat> In the beginning of each day, we rise from sleep. At the beginning of each midnight praise, we say, Arise, O children of the light, O children of the resurrection. The resurrection becomes an action, a life, a daily presence in human's life. When we live the resurrection, we not only live it during the fast feast celebration period, but the joy of the resurrection extends and radiates throughout our church. And on all occasions, feasts and fasts, and throughout the entire liturgical calendar. Our daily matins prayer represents an enactment of the resurrection. As we say, in your light, O Lord, we shall see light. On the Sunday of every week, we celebrate this day that the Lord has made. On the 29th of every Coptic month, we celebrate and commemorate the Annunciation, Nativity, and Resurrection. Every year, we celebrate the Feast of the Resurrection, not for a single day, but for seven weeks that end on the 50th day, and we call that period the Holy 50. The celebration of the Resurrection, therefore, lasts not just for an hour, a day, or a month, but an entire year. And in all of our rituals, such as the rite of matanyas, or the prostrations to the ground, when we kneel to the ground and say, my Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner, a person prostrates and then stands up, remembering that the resurrection is what allowed him this blessing to rise from his mistakes and sins. The joy of the resurrection must be lived by all of us. Also, we must extend it to each other. Each one of us should be a source of joy for others. The question that you can ask yourselves daily is this. Did you make someone happy today? Can you, through your life or through the meaning of the glorious resurrection in you, or through your relationship with Christ, or by attending your church, or through the partaking of the holy mysteries, or by reading the Holy Bible, do you make everyone around you happy? Are you a reason for joy? The resurrection calls you to be a source of happiness and joy for everyone. Do not forget, beloved, that we often repeat the word Alleluia in the church. Alleluia means rejoice to God. Rejoice, all of you. Our spiritual practice aims for us to rejoice. And the goal is to live the resurrection. As I said at the beginning of my talk, when Christ rose from the dead, he wanted to give us this joy to live daily, to testify, to teach it, practice it, and rejoice in it. The glorious resurrection is a calling to eternal delight. All the spiritual practices we offer, their ultimate goal is to rejoice so that our joy may be fulfilled in eternal bliss. Do not forget that in the resurrection, we meet with many different individuals. In the resurrection, we rejoice with all the characters and all the personalities that were there before us in the events of the glorious resurrection. We rejoice with John the Beloved, the only disciple who remained with Christ until the cross. Christ entrusted him with his mother, the Holy Virgin Mary, this was a lesson on loyalty and an image of the resurrection. We also rejoice with Mary Magdalene, who was the first to go to the tomb. She saw and witnessed the risen Christ and called him Raboni, which is to say teacher. This was a lesson on loyalty as well. In the resurrection, we also see Thomas the skeptic. Jesus appeared to his disciples in the presence of Thomas a week after the resurrection, while he had appeared before multiple times. Thomas was the disciple who was called by the Lord to put his finger in the print of the nails and to put his hand into his side. So he shouted, my Lord and my God. I hope that the joy of the resurrection fills your life always, in every church, every diocese, and with all those who serve. I send my congratulations to you from the beloved land of Egypt. I offer them to you on behalf of all the members of the Holy Synod and on behalf of the whole Coptic Orthodox Church here in Egypt. May we all rejoice in the glorious resurrection. Christos Anisti, Abithos Anisti, signed His Holiness Pope Teodros II. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. The Paschal message of the Feast of Resurrection 2022 by His Eminence, Metropolitan Amsterdam. It's titled, He Went Out Conquering and to Conquer, from Revelations chapter 6, verse 2. My beloved, the blessed children of the Holy Church, Christ is risen, truly he is risen. It is my pleasure to wish all of you a blessed feast of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The feast of the resurrection is a feast of victory, because when our Lord Jesus arose from the dead, he was victorious over death, sin, Satan, and the world. Indeed, he went out conquering and to conquer. His first point is victory over death. Death entered into the world as a result of sin, and God warned Adam that in the day, 
that you eat from it, the tree, you shall surely die. But the first man disobeyed the commandment and ate of the tree of disobedience, and consequently Adam fell, lost his state of grace, and plucked for himself and for the entire human race the sentence of death. Additionally, the human race became under bondage to death. As St. Paul explained, we were dead in trespasses. As a result, death spread to all men because all sinned. However, Christ overturned the death and the death sentence by conquering death through his resurrection. And we say in the Paschal Hymn, by his death he trampled death, and to those in the tombs he bestowed eternal life. Moreover, death lost its dominion over mankind because Christ raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places. Furthermore, death has become a passage for us to pass from this present life to another far better life, as expressed in the litany of the departed, for there is no death for your servants but a departure. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, better known as the resurrection chapter, St. Paul wrote, Death is swallowed up in victory, O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? His second point is victory over sin. The sting of death is sin, and death is understood as separation from God. Since God is the source of light and life and holiness, therefore, the results in separation from life and light and holiness. Without light in his life, man stumbled in darkness and descended from one evil to another. Moreover, man was incapable of justifying himself, neither by his works nor by the works of the law, because they have all turned aside, they have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good, no, not one, as written in Romans chapter 3. Sin dwelled inside man, and his enslavement caused him to cry, I am carnal, sold under sin, as is written in Romans chapter 7. However, through the sacrifice on the cross, Christ, the Most Holy, completely reversed man's condition because he has appeared to put away sin by the, sacrificial, by the sacrifice of himself. And consequently, Christ's glorious resurrection delivered man from the law of sin and saved the human race from the death sentence. As St. Paul wrote, For the law of the Spirit is of life in Christ Jesus, has made me free from the law of sin and death. However, sin continues to separate man from God and leads to death, but repentance brings, back, brings man back to God and leads to life. This concept is clearly illustrated by the parable of the prodigal son, where the father said, For this is my son who is dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. His third point is victory over the devil. The fall of the first man was through the envy and deceit of the devil. But the fall was not limited only to Adam because all mankind fell. However, the father in his love sent his only begotten son to the world to deliver mankind from the servitude of the devil. And in the incarnation, the son of God took our human nature with a human soul and accepted to be tempted by the devil so that he may conquer Satan and grant us victory. Although Christ conquered the devil in the wilderness, yet he accomplished a greatest, the greatest victory over the devil on the cross when he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Christ's glorious resurrection and victory over the devil fulfill the prophecy that he shall bruise your head. His fourth point is the victory over the world. The whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. The devil is the prince of this world. And the world has its own principles and ideas and desires and lusts. However, victory over the world came through Christ's resurrection. And we are called to trust in his victory and have confidence in his words. These things I have spoken to you that in me you have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Therefore, although we live in the world, yet we, do not know, we know that we are of God. My beloved, let us rejoice in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and that we are raised with him. Let us rejoice because our Lord Jesus conquered death and sin and the devil and the world and bestowed upon us a new life. Let us pray for the peace of the Holy Church and for our beloved Father and Shepherd, His Holiness, Pope Tawadros II. Let us pray for the repose of the blessed soul of Father Arsenius Ordid, who was martyred in Alexandria, Egypt, as well for his blessed family and his congregation. Let us pray for the peace of the whole world, and especially for Russia and Ukraine. And we ask God to comfort to all, to give comfort to all the families of, of the victims, healing to the wounded, and safe return for the refugees to their homes. Wishing you many happy returns. Signed, 
Metropolitan Amos Champion. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Then he was placed in the tomb according to the prophetic voices on the third day Christ rose from the dead Alleluia 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 Jesus Christ, the King of glory, rose from the dead. This is he to whom is due glory with his God. Father and the Holy.